This fan theory connects Baby Yoda to an ancient Star Wars prophecy. This is the way, Star Wars fans, because after months and months of sadly staring out the window waiting for Giancarlo Esposito to throw us another Moff Gideon morsel or for more news about fan-favorite characters like Boba Fett or Bo-Katan or Ahsoka Tano joining The Mandalorian, Disney finally threw us a bone. On Wednesday, Disney revealed The Mandalorian Season 2 will premiere on Disney Plus on October 30th. Unfortunately, apart from a first glimpse at young Yoda from Star Wars The High Republic, Lucasfilm didn't tell us anything about the Yoda we really care about, the wee baby Yoda. I would like to see the baby. Thankfully, there's a fan theory floating around the unknown regions of the internet that not only connects the wee baby Yoda to an ancient Star Wars prophecy, but also explores Ahsoka Tano's role in The Mandalorian Season 2. So strap on your Beskar foil hats as we break it all down. Now, of course, if we're right about this, it could be considered a spoiler, so if you're worried about that kind of thing, maybe we can offer you a nice egg in these trying times instead. <laughs> the theory, which we spotted via Esquire, comes from Reddit user Andre Loga, and it relies heavily on something that may be familiar to Clone Wars fans, the Mortis Arc. It's a Season 3 Clone Wars story about the never-ending struggle to bring balance to the Force. And while allegorical in nature, the Mortis Arc can also be seen as a prophecy that relates to the cyclical nature of the galaxy far, far away. In Overlords, Anakin, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Ahsoka Tano follow a distress signal that leads them into a strange plane of existence known as the Mortis Realm. It's a world ruled over by three godlike force-wielding beings, the father, the son, and the daughter. The father, who represents balance, constantly struggles to maintain equilibrium between his daughter, who represents the light side of the force, and his son, who represents the dark side of the force. Now, as it turns out, the father is actually the one who sent the distress signal in the first place because he's dying. He wants the chosen one, Anakin, to take his place and maintain balance. Now, of course, Nothing goes as planned. The sun tries to turn Anakin to the dark side, Ahsoka gets possessed and mortally wounded, and the daughter channels the last of her life force into Ahsoka in order to save her life. Now, according to the theory, the child isn't just this cute nickname that we have for Baby Yoda. It's actually a continuation of the Mortis Arc's prophecy. The Mortis Arc parallels Anakin's story as the Chosen One and the cyclical nature of how the Force always must return to a point of balance. In Star Wars lore, the Chosen One prophecy states, A Chosen One shall come, born of no father, and through him will ultimate balance in the Force be restored. Now, initially, Anakin rejects his role as the father, succumbs to the son's temptations and selfishness, falling to the dark side when he becomes Darth Vader. And that throws the Force into disarray. Ultimately, though, the father preserves the light and restores balance to the Force, i.e. when Anakin rejects the darkness by killing Palpatine and, in a way, himself, in Return of the Jedi. But where there is death, there must also be life, at least according to this theory. Loga posits something called a Vitae arc. The theory states, every time the cycle restarts, the child and the Chosen One are born anew. The Chosen One grows up, falls to the dark side, but is redeemed and restores balance to the galaxy, becoming the father. The child, still just a baby, lives on to centuries later, train the one who will turn the next Chosen One back to the light side. Now, as many Star Wars mathematicians have already deduced, Baby Yoda is 50 years old at the beginning of The Mandalorian, and that means that he would have been born in the same year as Anakin Skywalker. And given the longevity of Yoda's species, this would make them ideal candidates to serve as this childlike mentor figure. Meanwhile, you have Ahsoka Tano, who is imbued with the essence of the daughter and rocking some seriously Gandalf-esque robes, and she's apparently going to become the next evolution of the daughter, the mother. Now, the mother must raise the child, Baby Yoda, a creature made of both light and dark, to prepare him to mentor the next Chosen One. But with too much light, balance must be restored, and the mother must give her life to protect the child, thereby extinguishing her life. And thus, the cycle must continue. The child will grow up to guide the new Chosen One, a.k.a. the new father. Now, an earlier version of Logos theory states the child will actually become the father and create two new children, the son and the daughter, to restore balance. And that theory posits that maybe those new children could be Rey and Kylo Ren, which is a nice way to connect the idea of forced dyads to this long-standing bit of prophecy, even if things feel a bit wonky, chronologically speaking. Now, there are certainly some issues with these theories. First of all, the idea that Dave Filoni would kill off his most beloved creation, Ahsoka Tano, just when she finally makes her way to live-action stardom? Well, that feels a bit hard to swallow, but given that Baby Yoda can use Force healing, maybe it'll mean yet another death and resurrection for everyone's favorite Togruta. 
Now for people asking, what about Yaddle? First of all, great question. Second of all, the theorist counters that just as not every human is the chosen one, not every member of Yoda's species is going to be the child. And given that the Star Wars canon has not explicitly laid out the flip side of this prophecy, some folks might take issue with how the theorist applies titles like Mother and Child to characters like Ahsoka and Baby Yoda. Now, it's hard to take any prophecy literally because there's almost always some wiggle room, but I gotta admit, it's as compelling an argument as anything I've heard thus far, and it would give the cutest character in the galaxy far, far away a cosmic significance that feels oh so very Star Wars. But in the meantime, tell me, what do you think? Do you agree with this theory? What do you think Ahsoka Tano's role is going to be in The Mandalorian Season 2? Let's discuss in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, make sure you head to Nerdist.com.